Dr. Heller. To be Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Time. Hope this uh, doesn't get you in trouble also calling on me next. Um, but I have a couple things for the record. First, I'd like to submit an opening statement. Uh, your staff has that. So ordered. And uh, second, uh, also for the record, as a USC alum who spoke with uh, Pat Hayden just before this hearing, I'm pretty sure that we usually watch the Trojans beat Notre Dame on NBC and not on ESPN. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Branch. <laughs> not uh, Stanford. I wish I could say that. Um, having said that, uh, uh, to you, Dr. Emmert, I have a couple questions. The seven points that you brought up, I think, are what you say you're trying to achieve. I think are more weaknesses today than they are strengths. Um, if you have to talk about student, uh, students having scholarships for life, uh, today you don't have them, and I think that's a weakness. If you have to talk about men and women and having full and actual coverage of their costs while they're in college is a weakness because it's something that you don't have today. Um, if you're talking about leading in the area of safety, you're not doing it today. Um, if the NCAA is talking about taking the lead in sexual assault, then they're not doing it today. Um, if you talk about gaps in insurance coverage, it means it's not happening today. But we can go on and on. Uh, managing time demands on these men and women that are in school means it's not happening today. Um, and I'll share with you, every once in a while, the chairman and I agree on something. Uh, I call that lightning in a bottle. Um, maybe it's uh, um, careful. Maybe the stars are aligning. I'm not sure on this one. But needless to say, I agree with them. And that is that we do have jurisdiction here uh, in this Congress over the NCAA. And so my question to you is this. If tomorrow there was a bill in front of the United States Senate that would disband the NCAA. Um, and for all the discussions and hearings that we, uh, uh, witnesses uh, that spoke today, give me reasons why I shouldn't vote for that bill. Well, I'm happy to. Uh, the, the fact is that, first of all, we've been focused already in this brief period of time on the things that aren't happening. But the reality also is, is that an enormous amount of very, very good things are happening good. That, we, that we haven't hear talked about. So uh, when, when we focus on the issues of college sports, the, the vast majority of them, as many of you have noted, the vast majority of those issues are really focused on uh, men's basketball and football as it's played in the top handful <laughs> of institutions. If, if you look at uh, BCS football and men's basketball, you are looking at less than 5% of all of intercollegiate athletics. You're missing 95% of intercollegiate athletics. For that other 95%, there are very few of those challenges or problems that are occurring. Uh, indeed, it is serving, so let's, I, I'm not very good at math in my head, but if it's 95% of 460,000 students, let's just say it's 450,000 students or 425,000 students for whom this is working amazingly well. They are graduating at a higher rate than their students, the rest of the student body on their campuses. They're graduating at a higher rate than the rest of the students in the United States. Yes, we, we can in fact have a very good learned discussion about how we measure graduation rates, but if you use the federal graduation rate, student athletes in Division I graduate at 1% higher than the non-athletes non on all of our campuses across America. If you look at men's and women's basketball, uh, if you look at football, the graduation rates, as, as Mr. Bradshaw pointed out, have been steadily growing for more than 15 years now, each and every year. If you look at African-American men, the African-American men on any given campus have a 9% higher probability of graduating if they happen to be an athlete than if they're not an athlete. Uh, the, the fact is that student athletes make very good students. Yes, there are many issues, and our two former athletes here, I think, have pointed them out very, very nicely that need to be addressed. But for the vast majority of students, being an athlete also goes along with being a better student and more likely to graduate. And also, we believe, though the data is not well done, and I just learned from Dr. Southall that he's working on a study that I think will be very useful, we believe that there's good reason to see that they are more successful in life as well overall. So one of the things that we all need to work on together is to make sure that we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater here. Uh, intercollegiate athletics, as you pointed out, Mr. Rockefeller, is a wonderful part of our society and provides extraordinary opportunities for the vast majority of student athletes. I focus my comments on the things that I'd like to see fixed. 
you just elaborated on them. Uh, that should not be interpreted as everything's wrong in college sports. Indeed, even if you look at scholarships, in fact, no one is giving uh, a guaranteed four, not a, no one, most schools are not giving guaranteed four-year commitments. USC is just committed to do right. that. University of Indiana has just committed to do that. A handful of others are, are looking at it right now. But well, wasn't that But the reality is the reality is that almost no student ever loses their scholarship. But wasn't that prohibited by the NCAA? It was. When did that change? Uh, it, well, we, th that's one of the things that I think will occur in the coming months. In other words, school did, schools did offer four-year scholarships until the NCAA prohibited it. They, they did, and I have no idea why that was put into the rules. I have my own notions, but I have no idea. I didn't even know when that occurred, but a number of years ago. Bill, do you know when that occurred? 1973. 73. 73. I was, and no reason as to why? Uh, Bill, do you know really, why? really don't know. Really don't know. And, and None of us was in the room. In recruiting, it's not a very good idea not to give multi-year scholarships. I, I trust the historian. I'd love to hear what Taylor Brent. I would. I'd like to hear this, yeah. Taylor, <laughs> the historical record on that was that it was driven by the coaches at the biggest universities, precisely the 65 biggest schools, because they wanted more control over their athletes. They are driven to win. Uh, you have a better chance of winning if you control the, the athlete and what time he gets up and how much time he spends in the weight room and so on and so forth. And if you can yank their scholarship, then you got more control over them. So, but you can't do that anymore, right? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can't control the time. The NCAA in 1973, at the behest of the big, big school athletic departments and coaches, put in a rule that you could not offer more than a one-year scholarship. In other words, guaranteeing the coaches that control over the athletes, and that survived for 40 years. Now, what they're trying to do is to repeal that law so that you could, at your option, offer more. It, it has, excuse me for interrupting, it, yeah. it has, in fact, been repealed. Yeah. It's one of the first things that I insisted on. But, that's, but it lasted for 40 years at the behest of the same 65 schools that are now proposing to do these reforms that you're talking about, and I, I think they're good, but it's because they can afford them and because the gap between the level of money involved and the needs of these athletes has gotten so obscene that they want to do it on their own and they can afford to do it. If, if Senator Heller would allow me, because this is such an important uh, point. It has, it has not changed a student athlete right now who, for the reasons of a coach at any time, can revoke that scholarship so that that student is no longer able to stay at a university. Dr. Emmer, that's true right now, right? It, it's variable. So uh, starting last year, uh, schools, two years ago, pardon me, schools were provided the option. In other words, this, this prohibition was repealed so that a school today can offer a multi-year scholarship, and many do. So as I just mentioned, the University of Southern California and Indiana, for example, have recently announced that that is precisely what they are going to do is offer full four-year scholarships. Many schools in the Big Ten have been doing so since this prohibition was list lifted. I don't know the extent to which it is. It, it, but it's not uniform. But it is most certainly not uniform. And it's not even the majority of schools. I believe Senator it's Booker, not, not close to the majority. Your turn will come. <laughs> <laughs> Would the NCAA ever require Do we need to remind this? him that he is NCAA? junior on this committee? <laughs> sorry, I think sorry. somehow he forgot and that now in this case. calling case. on Senator McCaskill.